Thank you. So, um, so, uh, so this is a short talk about the following uh, theorem. <coughs> um, so the full Fell-Jones conjecture holds for soluble groups. And I want to give a short sketch of the proof. And um, so there are two parts. So the first, the first part is um, well we would like to reduce the class of solvable groups. So there are so many solvable groups. We don't want to prove it for all solvable groups. We want to reduce the class. So it would be nice to have um, um, a, a much smaller class of groups, um, which we only have to, to consider. So um, part one is um, show that it's enough um, to prove the Tell Jones conjecture for for the following groups. So we take um, the integers and then we take here an algebraic non zero number and we join this algebraic number and it's inverse. And then we take a semi direct product with the integers. And these integers here act on the left hand side by multiplication with this algebraic number. So here, um, W is an arbitrary algebraic number. So that's the first, the first step. And then um, the second step is. Um, Prove um, the Fell Jones conjecture for these groups. And I want to focus on the, on the first part. So, I would like to understand how we can reduce this class of solvable groups. And uh, for this purpose, I need some inheritance properties, and that's why I want to recall the inheritance properties of the full Fell Jones conjecture. So I, I will always work with the most general version of the Fell Jones conjecture, and this version has, has uh, these uh, inheritance prop properties. So it's stable under under taking subgroups, under passing through overgroups of finite index, under directed limits, under free products and direct products, and then there is an inheritance uh, property for extensions. So suppose uh, we have such a uh, short exact sequence, then we know that uh, the Fell Jones conjecture holds for the group in the middle. If it holds for, for the left hand side, for the right hand side, and, um, and for um, the inverse of, finite, uh, of, of, of infinite cyclic subgroups of this uh, group on the, on the right hand side. So these are the inheritance properties I want to use. So, okay, so let's start with, with part one. So part one is um, reduce the class of solvable groups. And um, well, in the literature, one can find a nice result, which is due to Farrell and Linnell. And uh, they prove the following. They show that um, every solvable group, every solvable group, um, satisfies this Fell Jones conjecture uh, if it holds for all uh, nearly uh, crystallographic groups. Uh, 
And so um, maybe I should remind you what, the, what a crystallographic group is. So this is a, a group of the following shape. Um, so this is a semi-direct product. And, and uh, the, the group on the uh, left-hand side is um, uh, torsion-free, abelian of uh, finite rank. And uh, this group on the right-hand side is uh, virtually cyclic. <coughs> So, so by so um, by finite rank, I mean if I tensor this with Q, then it says finite Q domain. Um, and um, well, there's a the third condition. So one requires that if I tensor A with Q, then this is a this is ir irreducible as uh, QC module. So this, uh, this virtual cyclic group C acts on A by conjugation. And in this way, we have here a QC module. So that's what, what, what they prove. And well, that's not what I want. But nevertheless, um, there are many ideas in this, in this proof uh, which, which we can use. So, um, so let's, let's start. So maybe we start with the, at the beginning with a solvable group. And then we try to reduce the class of, of these groups. So if I have a solvable group, what I can do is I can look at the derived series. So this is the derived series. And, uh, and then a good idea is to look at the following um, short effect sequence. So um, there I have the group um, G n minus 1, which is abelian. And uh, this group is characteristic in G, so it's a normal subgroup and we can uh, look at the quotient. And now I would like to uh, apply this uh, inheritance properties, a property for extensions. So what do we have to do? Uh, now we know that uh, G satisfies um, the Fair Jones conjecture um, if the following groups do of G n minus one and the quotient and And then we have these, uh, these three images, which uh, um, all may like, are like this. So this is the group. Now, um, this group here is um, abelian. And so it's, it's a known fact that abelian groups satisfy the Feldron's conjecture. Um, this group here has um, the nice property that um, its derived length um, is n minus 1, so it's shorter. So we might um, do a um, group by induction. And uh, this thing here, this is isomorphic to a uh, semi-direct product. And now we can do this induction um, on n, which is the length of the derived series. And so what we obtain is we, we see that um, then every solvable group satisfies 
Das ist ja schon Contextual. Um, if it holds. For. So this, this here is an abelian group, so we only have to check um, groups of this shape. The similar product of an abelian group with integers. So that's the some of the, the first step, and now we know that we only have to prove the foil Jones conjecture for for these groups with uh, abelian. And now um, the idea is well to to go on. So um, what would be the next idea? And the next idea would be next step. Um, we can consider. Um, the short exact sequence um, T um, where T is the torsion subgroup. And then we can again apply this inheritance properties, and so that's some other way how we can uh, make this class of groups uh, smaller and smaller. So I, I don't have time to to explain all the steps. So um, let me just uh, mention um, um, a result which we obtain after after some more steps. Okay. Um. So after some steps, after some steps, we obtain the following. Um, every solvable group satisfies the Calchon's conjecture if it holds for. Um, so it turns out that we only have to check um, groups of the following shape. So here we have a semi-direct product of a abelian torsion group with the integers. And then we have to check um, the Reef product. Direct sum. Oh, what's that? And so this acts by commuting. And we have to check um, groups of this shape. So we have here a finite uh, dimension of Q vector space, semi direct product of that. And now um, the nice thing is that um, uh, for the first uh, group, first two groups, um, this has already been proven by Ferro and Ginelli. So that's already known. So we only have to consider 
these groups. And um, now let's look more precisely at these groups. We have this uh, automorphism uh, phi. And so now we can look at uh, phi 1, which is which we can consider as a matrix, so this is an element in GL n of q. And um, well, I want to go to the algebraic closure, so we can consider this as a subgroup of GL n, the algebraic closure of q. And um, the idea is now is that we can um, um, decompose um, this matrix phi 1 in uh, Jordan blocks so um, so such a Jordan block <coughs> looks like this W lies in the algebraic closure and is non zero. And now, what we do is we can consider this as a subgroup of, of the following group. And now we can use this decomposition in Jordan blocks, so this is the same as some direct sum. This and this is a subgroup of the um, direct product. So what we see is that, um, well, it's enough to consider these groups here. And now the, um, the next step is um, um, so there's a short exact sequence. Like this, and we can apply our um, our inheritance prob property for extension to this short exact sequence, and then it turns out that we only have to consider um, groups of this shape here. And well, then we can go on because this um, algebraic closure. This is a um, direct sum over um, Q W and that's why we only have to consider groups of this shape and finally we can use the fact that um, that Q W that this is can uh, think of this as a co-limit of groups of this shape and then we end up with these groups. So that's that's a rough idea how to um, how to reduce this class of groups. And um, well I have five minutes left and I would like to um, to say a few words how to how we can prove that these groups satisfy the self jones criteria.
what is this now? R2, and would like to show that these groups satisfy the Hirschholz conjecture. Now there's a nice result, um, which is due to um, Farrell and V. And they show that um, um, sort of, um, this group satisfies on the Feldschultz con conjecture if, if this W is a natural number. Open. No, no, we have to give many groups which are isomorphic to this group. So, so you know that the, the you, you can think of the, so the, you can write the, the rational numbers as a co-limit of groups which are isomorphic to the, to the integers. Yeah, okay. And that's what, what I'm using here. So, so this, this, um, this W is, is an algebraic number. What's, what's, what's the question? What's W? An, uh, an algebraic number. So this, this W, this is non-zero algebraic number. So yes, yes, it could be. And so this is a uh, very important um, example. Yes, 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 that's it. You're completely right. And um, so um, I, I will not explain what, what they do in detail, but um, for their purpose, it's important to, to have a, a nice space where this group acts on. So what they, so let's consider the, the case where P is a prime number. Then um, they show that This ring here acts on a tree. So there's a way. Um, well, Sarah explains this in his um, book how to um, how to obtain out of a valuation function a tree. So this is the valuation function which uh, which counts how often p is conjoined in the limit. So this is um, this. So we have an action here, and then we have an action on real numbers, which is just given by um, uh, protection on the on, on the integers, and then the initial and so it turns out that this uh, this action is very nice. So it's uh, it's um, it's um, proper and it's co-compact. But uh, well, there's a little problem because it's not isometric. But uh, there's a way how to make it isometric. So we have to change this uh, metric a little bit. So we have to to use a warp product. So. Um, with modified metric. And then it's, um, uh, the action is, um, um, so what, what did I want to do? Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, and then um, so with, with this modified metric, which is a warp product, um, this action is isometric. And now, um, 
So somehow that's, that's the idea of what, what they use. And then they, they use a method which is called the, the Fel-Shang method, method. And I will not explain what it is. And then, well, the question is somehow how to generalize this result. And so it turns out that it, this is not so easy. And so, um, so what one has to do, so we have this group here. And then one has to embed it in a bigger group. Oh, I don't know whether I will explain this in detail. And then this group here, this bigger group, acts on a nice space. So here we have a, a product of, of trees. And um, then there occurs uh, another component. It's the rank of this. So maybe I should say with O is. So, uh, so we have Q, W, and O. These are the uh, integers. And well, then there's another component with, with it, R, to the degree of W. So, um, so if, if P is a prime number, then this is really the same. So this component here corresponds to this, and this R corresponds to this. So if P is a prime number, then this is the degree of one. And um, now um, one can do the same. So we can use a uh, modified metric. <coughs> and then it turns out that this action is uh, proper, co-compact, and isometric. And then one would like to apply this fair Schiang method, and then one sees that, this, that there's, a, there's a problem. So it's not possible to do this. And somehow the reason is that this, this space here is too big. So here we have a tree which is one dimensional, and here the dimension is too big. Um, but nevertheless, this space here is a cat zero space. And so um, what one can do is one can combine two methods. And so the one method is the is the Fell Shang method, which is used there. And, and the other method is the method which one uses to prove the Fell Jones conjecture for Cathero groups. And so that's some of the, the strategy how to how to prove this. Okay, that's it. Well, that's that's bad. Yeah, it's not enough. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's co-compatible with respect to the, the bigger group. Uh, it's a discrete group. Yes. Okay. Well, what was it? it? So, um, so you can look at this uh, fractional ideal, which is given by by W. So I are the ring of integers, and you can uh, decompose this in uh, in, um, in prime ideals. And so these prime ideals are the prime ideals which occur here. And now um, this ring O W this is defined as um, um, whole numbers x divided by y um, and q, w, oops, sorry, with a property 
that um, that the denominator um, only contains the prime ideals. So, so here I, I think of this as x and y and O only contains the, the prime ideals um, pi 1 pi f. So somehow you, you're only allowed to um, to divide by, by elements which contain these prime ideals. So for example, um, this w and its inverse airline Well, I, I have to make the, the group bigger to ensure that the, the action is uh, co-compact. Co-compact. So I make the, the group bigger because of co-compactness. The, the first, first part is cut zero. Yeah. So, so here, this is not really a product. It's, it's, it's a VAR pro product. Well, I, I, I don't see this. Yeah. But we can discuss this later. Okay, thank you.